All right, guys. It's about to be Christmas time, so that means we need to probably talk about good old Saint Nick. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and get into the fan art section. This one is from Ender Films 404 said, Yo, I've been watching for years, started watching around 2018-ish, and I figured it's high time to make some fan art. Have a slime getting pissed at the autoplay feature. Go ahead. Autoplay again. I dare you. That's great. I like that. The next one we have here is from Razdaz again. I was inspired by a Sonic-themed Vroid asset I found on Booth, so I made a Sonic-style Slime Cat Cirrus. Feel free to use this in vids and streams, by the way. Making Vroids is a lot of fun. Used to be RTOT, now Raspberry Daz on Twitch. You know? You know? You know? We could. Anyways, the next one we have is from Liz Bean. Said, did half of this before work today and got back home to finish it. Uh, hold on. Boop, 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 boop. Finish it out of procrastination of college assignments this week. Well, you know what? It looks fantastic. I like I like the love for VKS, Cirrus. I need to use the VKS outfit more. But... I need to get it on more than one model. Eventually, I'm going to have it on the uh, the Suzu model and the uh, Rime model. Eventually. Said Bayosaurus? I mean, less Bayonetta Cirrus and more, you know, the Cirrus that I've, I've had in VKS form for a while. But it looks great, and I like it. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get right into talking about Fuentes. As uh, things have been ramping up with him as he has been allying himself with Yi lately, I figured it would probably do my audience a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a good to have a refresher on the type of person that he is before we get into the stuff between him and Yi, respectively. So. When are white people going to stand up and say that? How dare you? And white people are always apologetic. Oh, no, no, I'm not a Nazi. Oh, no, no, I'm not anti -Sans. I would never. No, no, I'm not this. I'm not that. Hang on. First of all, how dare you? How dare you? This Channel Pup has said, do not piss. Apologies, pup, but I will piss as much as I want. Everywhere. Uncontrollably. And you can't stop me. You leave back to the UK soon. I get to piss on the entirety of the United States, and you can't do shit about it. But I do miss you, too. I want to go back. I want, I want to go back to Oregon and hang out. That, and also, I want you back here to hang out, because I've been there and you've been here. Dead. Anyway, we're talking about Nick Fuentes, and I gotta raise the volume here, because he's, his audio production is weird. This is a decent nation. This is a good nation of good people. And if anything, this nation welcomed Jewish people into America. And then this is what we get, right? We welcomed Jewish people into America, and then this is what we get. What does that statement mean? I don't know. What does that statement mean to you? What does that statement mean to you, particularly? That he's trying to look like that my pillow guy? Oh, yeah, he's trying to look like Mike Lindell. Uh, Pup says we want to come back to Marietta and eat some more garbage. Pup, there is so much shit in Marietta. Y'all did not try. That y'all need to. Uh, context, for those who don't know, there was a Sonic convention held in Marietta. Sunset City had a booth, uh, courtesy of both the hosts for the convention and also uh, Nick expanding his for us. Uh, but there's so much good food in Marietta. We got to try a bunch of it because I was like, hey, I know all the good places here. Let's fucking go. But Snow Taco, thank you very much for the tier one subscription. 
said welcomed when Jews weren't allowed in most of the original colonies. American revisionist history is weird, isn't it? If anything, America welcomed Jewish immigrants throughout the 20th century for various reasons. And then what do they do? They become successful in media and Hollywood and then browbeat us and call us Nazis and call us exterminationists and say we're murderers. All right. So I have a question. Um, can we talk about this real quick? He basically just said that the Jews gained power and then called us the exterminationists. This is really, really close to the same type of rhetoric that you would hear in Nazi Germany. The Jews have the power, they control the banks, uh, and yet it is on the regular German working man uh, to lift up the burden of the Jew. And so it's the same shit. He's saying the same shit just with the veneer of America as opposed to ye old Germany. Said so apparently he flunked world history or alternatively nitros. He learned world history well enough to know that we can make history repeat if we are so stupid. Why? Because we profess the same faith that we always have because, because of our ancestors who built this country that so graciously welcomed you here? How disrespectful, how dare you? Ingrate, how dare you? God, he seems like a really unfit father when he does that. How dare you? Ingrate, how dare you? Like, I know he doesn't have a teleprompter. I know he doesn't have that because he's doing a live stream. He doesn't have the time for that. But, my God, it sounds like somebody reading a script. It really does. It really does. Also, if you're... If you're being called an anti-Semite, typically a good thing to do is to ask yourself, hey, why am I being called an anti-Semitic person? Is there maybe something I'm doing that is causing that? Like if somebody says that you're anti-trans, ask yourself, hey, is this the case? Why could it possibly be the case that I am this person? Usually when an accusation like that comes, introspection is required. Now, you may come on the other end of that introspection realizing that the person who called you that is actually a bit of an asshole themselves, and you're not really exhibiting any of those traits. But if you're going to go, how dare you call me an anti-Semite? My ancestors let your ancestors hear and wah, wah, wah. If that's gonna be your your realm of defense, then my immediate thought is, oh, you probably are anti-Semitic then. If instead of responding to that with like legitimate defense, your response is to go, yeah, basically when Pixie Six just said, my ancestors could beat up your ancestors. If that's your defense, as opposed to like going, hey, so what is it that I've done that could be read as anti-Semitic? What is it that I did uh, that could be taken that way? And I'm not trying to advocate for like kowtowing to... The fuck? Where is that... Oh, shit! Oh, I see what happened. I see what happened. There was a raid. And I, I just got all of the noise in the background. I see what happened. Enzo says, My ancestors who welcomed immigrants here by burning crosses on their lawns and having necktie parties being threatened with graffiti and hostile at, and uh, physical hostility. What does Nick mean by welcomed here? Yeah, Nick is mm, dumb. That's the best way to put it. He's, he's very dumb. Or, alternatively, he's very smart, and he knows that people aren't going to think about that. He's going to think about people's glorified vision of America, and he's going to rely on that for his narrative. He's going to hear... Uh, he's going to hear somebody say, hey, what do you think about Jewish people? And he's going to say a whole bunch of things that sound very Americocentric, which relies on the listener being Americocentric as well. But if you're not, if you happen to be from, say, another country, or you happen to know enough about U.S. history to know that we actually don't have a really good track record with racism, uh, maybe you won't hear his rhetoric and agree. But if you are the type of person who spends a lot of time on the Internet and who spends a lot of time being angry at imaginary people who haven't actually ever met or slighted you, uh, but you have a hard-on, basically 
uh, for being the persecuted white guy because minorities are taking over all of the positions you like in, say, Hollywood or something, then you're probably the type of person to agree with Nick Fuentes. That's my feeling about it. I've heard enough about this Holocaust. I've heard enough about it. I don't want to hear one more time about it. Enough about that. How about we hear about the generosity of America that brought you here? We hear Holocaust museums. How about some gratitude museums? How about some gratitude? So why do we talk about the Holocaust, Nick? Why do we do that? The reason we talk about the Holocaust is because we need to remember events like that so as never to repeat them. That's the goal. We remember the tragedies so we remember how they began and we make sure they don't happen again. When you start going with this rhetoric of, how about some generosity? How about we start talking about that? Then what ends up happening is we slowly start to forget as a nation, as we already have in a lot of ways, we start to forget the types of ways that our country operated. We forgot that for several years in World War II, uh, we had several political parties that tried to prevent us from going in and helping with the events that were happening in Nazi Germany and stopping a lot of them. We had several people on radio, podca uh, radio broadcasts who were talking in favor of the things that were happening in Nazi Germany. We had, in America, a very strong eugenics movement. Not counting our history with things like Jim Crow, which should probably show everybody uh, what our, our general proclivity is when it comes to people of different races. Mind you, that was happening at the same time we were going in and assisting with Nazi Germany. So... <sighs> and redlining, and the Tuskegee experiments, and everything. When we forget what we did to people... We start to believe that we can do it again. For Christendom, how about some gratitude for European civilization, some gratitude for America? Instead, all we get is this guilting, all we get is this blood libel, insults. How dare you? You want to talk about a Holocaust. You know, the real Holocaust was Jesus Christ being crucified. That was a real Holocaust. So, no the fuck it wasn't for a multitude of reasons, Nick. One, that was a single person, so that, that doesn't count for the, the word Holocaust. Secondly, Jesus dying was part of his plan. Literally, that was his dad sending him down to Earth to die. If you want to call it a murder, sure, but again, it was the plan all along. That is not a holocaust per the Christian faith, and it's not a holocaust from a standard analysis of the situation. Nick, I know that the point here is to get a whole bunch of white Christians riled up in your favor, and unfortunately, the fact of the matter is, you're successful in doing that. You have gained success in the world of bigotry. You have reached some of the highest platitudes that you can within that world. Private jet planes with ye, meetings with Donald Trump, your own hosting platform, getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars from your fans. You've made it. You've done the thing. I have to, at the very least, congratulate your ability to monetize racist, bigoted assholes. But the reality of things is, You've engineered an audience that can very easily turn on you. And I don't know when it's going to happen. But just know that it's happened to several right-wing figures. The more virulent the audience you create, the more virulent they can be when they are not on your side. Oh, but don't worry. Nick knows all about struggling uh, against an audience that might have uh, impulse controls. He talks about it all the time on his channel. In fact, he even talked about it here in this clip. Let's go ahead and take a listen, because I'm sure y'all aren't desensitized to anything Fuentes so far. Also, Freedom Inc., thank you for redeeming your points for an... Uh, 
Nah, you fucking degen. You know, these left-wing people, in their heart of hearts, they know they're wrong because, like, they know that black people are violent, you know? I will say, hey, black people are violent, and then they'll go, I bet you wouldn't say that in front of a black person. Why? Because they're a thug that'll hit me? Like, so you know it too. Okay, so you agree with me, you know? I could. So whenever you say, I bet you wouldn't say that in front of a person that actually is of that minority, it's not because you believe that they are also a violent person. It's that most people, when accused of shit like that, are going to seek some kind of repercussion on you. It might be violent. It might not. But even if an individual person were violent on you, it doesn't speak to an entire race. Moreover, bear in mind that this is a carefully crafted scenario that Nick gets to dictate. Nick gets to be both the opposing voice and the voice of Ascension. He gets to be all parties in a hypothetical that he creates. So when he says this and like, oh, okay, cool, everybody agrees with me uh, that these racists, act, uh, these racists act a certain way, it's because he created the person who was rebutting him as opposed to having a person's actual opinion play, he gets to be the other person there and his audience eats it up because he's got an audience of people who are ready and willing to immediately, upon hearing anything he says, nod their heads because they don't want to be seen as racist, but they don't want to change their opinions either. And what's a really easy way to be seen as not a terrible person, but still having all the opinions of a terrible person. Hang around other terrible people. Hop into your echo chamber. Saves you a lot of grief. You can go on the show and say, hey, you know, the, these uh, blacks, hey, 13% of the population, half the crime, you know, they struggle with the impulse control. They're violent. And then they'd say, bet you wouldn't say that in front of a black person. Oh, really? Why is that? Because they would... Uh, you know, they read me their dissertation from Harvard about why that's not true or why? Because they would hit me. Why? Well, because we fundamentally agree. You know, these left... So, again, it's not that we agree. Also, the digs at uh, black people and lack of education is if, you know, people like Nick Fuentes aren't the reason it's harder for minorities to get educations in the first place. The types of ways that people like Nick act... The types of people who are enabled by that, when they get in power, they tend to make it harder for people to get better educations. And it's not just college. So you can't just be like, actually, uh, didn't you know that uh, there are scholarships for being black, but there are not scholarships for being white? So uh, you've been uh, debunked, liberal. No, 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 no. You need to remember that education is an ongoing thing that begins when you're a child and leads all the way into and through adulthood. We have to take into account those first 18 years of education as well. And if we take that into account, then now we got to talk about the history of redlining. We have to talk about, you know, that, that scary boogeyman, critical race theory. We have to talk about how racism literally has led to schools being segregated despite segregation not being legal anymore. And also, just because a single person doesn't read you a dissertation, again, says nothing about a race. But Nick, we're forgetting another really important thing here. You know why the 1350 meme is a thing? I did a video a long time ago on it, so I'm going to not get into the nitty-gritty details, because I can just link that video for you guys to go watch. It was about, you know, genetic pseudosciences and the way people believe uh, different races act. But when you over-police one group of people for a long period of time, lo and behold, that group of people will show up more often in police reports. Weird, that. Funny, that. So what's 1315? It's 1350. And the entire statement is, despite making up only 13% of the population, black people make up 50% of the violent crimes. And it is a true FBI statistic. It is, a, it is a statistic that is backed up by data. However, what racist people want to do is they want to look at that data and then sit on it. What people who actually give a flying shit about the truth want to do is they want to look through that data and see what kind of story it actually tells.
It tells us a story about increased racial profiling. It tells us a story about over-policing of black neighborhoods. It tells us a story about the associations between crime and poverty. And now we have to start asking ourselves, how did that poverty happen in the first place? And you start tracking further and further back, and you realize, oh, wait a minute. It is almost as if this meme here is based on not actually an entire picture of the data. It's just based on saying the one fact and leaving it be. Facts that are spoken into the aether often are not actually spoken into the aether. Facts that are spoken into the aether are spoken into the aether for the purpose of generating a response, for the purpose of generating an opinion. You say a thing hoping that somebody will feel a certain way about the thing you said. You don't say it just to say it. Nobody except the most neurodivergent fuck out there says something just to say it when in a group of other people. You say something for the reactions of the other people, for the benefit of the other people. But we aren't done, because if we were done, that would mean I had a modicum of mercy. I don't, though. I don't. Because we need to get back to more uh, more Fuentes. More of the, the Fuentinator, as it were. Old Saint Nick. After all, it is Christmas. We should maybe focus a little bit on, on Old Saint Nick himself. When it comes to the so, here we go. When it comes to the Jews, here's a silver lining. It tends to go from zero to 60. Like, they're not wrong about that. But there's a reason for that. And the reason is them, okay? When it comes to the Jews, Thank every you for the society hydrate, freedom. where shit has gone down with these people, it always goes from zero to 60. It never starts with burning all the Talmuds in Paris, okay? It never starts that way. <laughs> but frequently it seems to end that way and it gets there very rapidly doesn't start there but it frequently ends there but i would say that the jew what is he talking about he's trying to say that um things go badly for jewish people and it's definitely jewish people's fault it is a hundred percent just their fault every society where shit has gone down it goes from zero to 60 and it's his fault Remember, anti-Semitism is a central tenet of the America First movement. It had its roots in the 30s and 40s. It, they were one of the movements that wanted to keep us out of World War II. And those elements have been embraced by the GOP, sometimes explicitly, sometimes implicitly. But we're not done. Again, I have no mercy. Y'all keep on trying to get me to do a singing stream, and y'all got us 55% of the way there. So this is my revenge. I'm making y'all suffer Nick Fuentes. I have this lovely thing in my brain that protects me from this shit. Some of y'all don't. Oh, let's see here. We might have an idiot in the chat. Uh, over here, stroking my dick, 88. Oh, interesting. 88 at the end of there. That's fun. Jewish be like, man, we love LGBT. Man, we love sucking that cock and kitty man. Uh, while also being in his room being like, yes, let's throw them off roofs. You're now property of Wizard Chan. Oh, you're doxing people. Interesting. How about we just go ahead and ban you? You go from having Heil Hitler at the end of your name, saying shit about Jewish people, being anti-LGBTQ, and then saying you're now property of, of Wizard Chan and dropping Amaranth's docks and ha uh, Hassan's docks. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and say this right now. The nanosecond one of y'all stupid-ass fuckers decide to dox me, decide to dox a person who literally lives in the woods and has guns, 
there's going to be a lot of stupid bodies. So please don't do that. Not for my safety, but for yours. That would be incredibly helpful for both of us. Ammo's expensive, and you're inconvenient. Anyways, let's go ahead and get back to stuff. Who's had better start being nice to people like us. Because Yes, Larry Adesi, I do have stand your ground laws in Georgia. Is great for shit like that. As what comes out of this is going to be a lot uglier and a lot worse for them than anything that's being said on this show or has been said on this show. Nick Fuentes subtly saying that we're going to be starting a race war against Jewish people again. Because of course he is. Said dox a person who would, in the woods, who would that help? Well, you see, uh, right-wing idiots like to dox people who they do not agree with as an effort to threaten or silence them. And it works a lot of the time. Uh, but I'm going to be honest. There are some people you don't do that to. A lot of people tend to think it's, you know, completely okay to dox liberals because the likelihood of people having guns is really low. I hate to tell pretty much anybody uh, who tries to think that way where I'm concerned. I'm not a liberal. So probably not a good idea. Not a safe idea. Doxing is already not great, but... Anywho... Telltale comes to mind. He's had to move uh, to New York. Best to him. Yep. Warlord video game glitch. Thank you very much for getting your points for an owl. In spite of the fact that I have been bullied by the Jews and I have been oppressed... The, and the, he's been bullied and oppressed by the Jews. Bullshit. I want to see some receipts on that slandered and lied about and attacked by the Jews. I have been completely precise for the most part and even handed and no, you haven't. You've been an anti-Semitic fuck. It's what got you knocked out of multiple channels. It's why you have your own channel now. Again, props to you for that, I guess. Nuanced about my view about this. No, you haven't. You've just been anti-Semitic situation. And I'm also a Christian. Which is going to matter. Because there, it could be a lot worse, I'm going to say, than this show. And what's go It could be a lot worse than my anti Semitism. Don't worry. I'm a Christian. The good Lord prevents me from being violent. Going to come out of this could be, like I said, it could be a lot uglier than what we say on the show. I know that there are other people that are going to push farther than that once this conversation really starts and what is this conversation what kind of conversation what type of question would you be needing to have about to or involving jewish people nick which kind and if you think that things are going to get a lot more violent involving jewish people nick that blood's going to be partially on your hands Saying that, oh, it's going to get worse than shit on my show. Nick, your show is a stepping stone to that stuff. An ex-member of the KKK literally sat you down in a diner trying to explain to you what you were doing and why it was wrong and how it's going to come crashing down on you the way it did him. And yet, here you are, continuing to do it. But I know why you're doing it, Nick. It's because it works for you. It gets you money. You do this because you get paid to. But I think you long since drank your own Kool-Aid. The Jews are going to look at people like me in America first and say, Damn, I miss when it was just that funny guy. And we pushed so hard and, and this and that because, because history has shown that once this train gets going... When it comes so that's the end of that clip, but basically it's him saying, oh, no, 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 don't worry. My anti-Semitism is fine because things are going to get a lot worse. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, haha, <laughs> race war, wink, wink, nudge, wink, wink. 
People like Nick disgust me. They are piece of shit human beings that deserve nothing more than to be scraped off the bottom of somebody's shoe. Like a chewed up piece of gum. Which ironically is the exact way that Nick thinks women are. Sir, please tell us that was your doggo barking. Uh, yeah, that was mine. That was Growlithe. Are we sure he's human? In a manner of speaking. He is a human. He 100% is. I am of the opinion that it is always important to remember that any one of us can fall down the rabbit hole and become a Nick Fuentes. Any one of us have the ability to fall so hard on our face and screw ourselves over and isolate ourselves so badly that we become that kind of monster. I think pretending that that can't happen does ourselves a disservice. Because if we keep pretending that people like Nick Fuentes are so different from us, then we risk never being able to understand how somebody falls down that rabbit hole. And if we never understand how somebody falls down that far, then how the fuck do any of us expect to check ourselves and our friends when they do? Almost everybody in this chat has probably had somebody who has fallen down a right-wing rabbit hole like this. Maybe not as explicit as the Nick Fuentes one. Maybe not as terrible or racist. But certainly, at the very least, existent. But, with that said, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Hopefully you've got somebody that you can pull out of this. Don't let somebody fall down the Fuentes rabbit hole. And don't let yourself become someone like Fuentes. As always, everybody, insert into the video tagline here.